What is up guys, my name is Critfer or Chris. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be installing the Grillcraft XE Series LED grill onto my 2018 WRX. This does fit on all 2015 and up cars, though because of the front end change um, on 2018 and up cars, uh, they do have two different grills that you are going to want to buy depending on which you have so if you have a 2015 to 2017 be sure to purchase that grill and if you have a 2018 plus then buy that grill um, this install can be followed even if you don't have the led light grill um, they do make a normal mesh one which i will throw up on the screen right here it does look pretty good but i would say if you're going to spend the money get the led one it adds so much functionality this install took me about 13 hours to complete and that's mostly because there wasn't any information anywhere uh, about how to do a lot of the wiring uh, there was information on how to do the actual like installation of the grill but aside from that there wasn't a whole lot so hopefully this video cuts down on some of that time that you would have to take um, but I would give yourself at least 10 hours to complete it and plenty of room in your garage uh, because this install does require you taking the front bumper off not a hard install by any means I'd say it's you know medium at most but it is very time consuming and you are going to need a friend to help you at certain parts so to remove the bumper you're going to have to remove all the pop clips and the bolts at the top of the bumper um, i believe they are a 10 millimeter off the top of my head uh, i'm sorry if i'm wrong uh, then move to the underside of the car where there will be six pop clips and three screws. Uh, or there will be plastic type of screws at the very center. Um, then remove all the pop clips from the fender well. Um, you don't need to move the wheels to do that, uh, but it does give you more room if you do move the wheels. Um, there is a pop clip that you do have to push in with a flathead screwdriver and I'll throw that up on the screen of how to do it and once all of those are taken out you're pretty much ready to remove the bumper uh, it's it seriously only took me like a half hour to do this so it's all by myself I'd never done it before it's super super easy to do um, and I recommend putting something on the ground so the bumper doesn't get scratched once you do get it off um, and this is a point where you are going to need a friend to help you. So have one of you sit on or stand on each side of the bumper and you're going to pull from the fender well uh, out towards you. Uh, you're not going to break anything, but you are going to hear some popping. And as you're doing that, you're going to start to go towards the center of the car and pull out from about where the headlights are. Again, you're gonna hear more popping. At that point, your bumper uh, should be off. Don't pull it out too far as the fog lights and turn signals will be connected. You have two options at this point. Once the bumper is on the ground, uh, you can either disconnect the fog lights and turn signals, um, from the wiring harness or you can actually remove them. I have a limited so my car only comes with the fog lights and those are held in by four Phillips head screws and I chose to take them out because I was going to tint them at the same time um, but it's really up to you um, and I don't know how the turn signals come off because obviously I don't have them they're built into my headlights so but I would assume that they're the same process, but really if you're not going to tint anything, I would say just disconnect it. There are several Phillips head screws that you'll need to remove first. Then there are four tabs that you'll have to move out of the way and the grill should just pop out at that point. Uh, flathead screwdriver really helped to get these tabs out of the way as demonstrated right here. Uh, the this is kind of hard to see on the video, I do apologize, but when you're actually in there, it, it's super clear and you'll totally know what I'm talking about with the tabs. So, uh, 
Before you are able to put the grill into the bumper, you're going to need to drill out the old holes uh, that the grill goes into to one fourth inch. Um, and then once you do that, you can put the grill in, but only lightly tighten it as we're going to be drilling two new optional holes. I do recommend it. There's, I mean, you got the bumper off, so you might as well drill these. Um, it's just going to help support the grill a little better than uh, without them. So they're going to be on the side of the grill and the size is that is uh, 3 16th inch and really you're just putting it on there to kind of figure out where it goes. I recommend putting a little dot there uh, with a marker or something and then taking the grill off uh, and drilling those holes out. And once you've drilled all of the holes out, you're able to fully tighten the grill down and you can install your lights onto the grill. So you're gonna start at the LED lights and you're gonna connect them to the wiring harness and then you're gonna bring the rest of the wiring harness up by the windshield wiper fluid into the engine bay near the battery. Uh, then you're going to connect the relay to a little support beam underneath one of the liners in the engine bay. Uh, that's removed by two pop clips and then you just pull it out. After you connect that, you're going to connect the battery terminals to the wiring harness and then you're going to shove the rest of the wiring harness down into the fender uh, where the engine bay liner was. After that, you're going to go into the fender well, and this is the point that moving your wheels is key, and you're going to remove your fender liner from the driver's side, and that's going to reveal where the wiring harness now is. And you're going to open the driver's side door and pull the rest of the wiring harness through the fender and through the door. You may not need to take the fender liner out, but it's going to make it much easier. Um, and once you're in there, you're going to take the driver's side door sill out and there's going to be a little kick panel that's held in by the door sill. Uh, and a pop clip that's right next to the clutch pedal. That's going to reveal where a bunch of the wiring is by the fuse panel. And then we're going to go outside of the car again. In between the fender and the door is going to be a little rubber grommet. Um, and this is where you're going to have to cut into it. And to minimize the size of the slit that has to be cut, I took the, uh, the switch off of the harness and just taped up the connections and shoved them through. A tip for cutting the hole is use a very sharp knife because this is a very strong material and I cut myself because I didn't use a very strong knife or a very sharp knife at first. So don't make that same mistake because that really hurt. And so once you put the wiring harness through the hole in this grommet, uh, you can reconnect the switch if you took it out and you can kind of put it up near the fuse panel. And if you have a blank, which most people probably will, you can put it there. I decided to just leave it by the fuse panel for the time being because I wanted a switch that looked a little more OEM. Um, but by the time this video comes out, I'll most likely have found a solution. So I will make an update video on that and what I did. Once the switch is in a good spot for you, uh, you can put the engine bay liner, fender liner, uh, kick panel, and door sill all back as you're essentially done. All you have to do is put the bumper back on. So before you put the bumper completely back on, you're going to want to adjust your lights. And the best way to do that is loosely mock up where the bumper will sit. So I just kind of pushed it into where 
it kind of sat originally and I adjusted the lights as needed um, after I actually tested them at night I did do a little more adjusting uh, and that's very hard to do once the bumper is back on so I really recommend you spend a lot of time adjusting um, while the bumpers off so once you've been once you have adjusted the lights uh, it's time for the bumper to go back on so start by putting your fog lights and turn signals in if you have them and then you're gonna need a friend again to help you put the bumper back on and so it helps if you put the three screws in the bottom of the bumper before you put it back on so you're going to want one friend to hold it up kind of in position while you put the screws in once that's done you're going to start at the outer edges by the fender liner where you started taking the bumper off and you're going to push it in from there make sure the fender liner all uh, lines up as I didn't originally do that and it was it didn't go in if the fender liner isn't in the right way on the bumper then it will not go in so just a note there and then you can also push the uh, clips in where the headlights are or near the headlights and then you're just gonna put all of your pop clips back in and put your bolts back in and you're pretty much done. This is one of the worst vlogging cameras. I mean, it looks great, but it's so heavy. I hate carrying it around, but um, I didn't really wrap up the last video, but I just, I wanna show you guys this grill and these fog lights in the daylight. We got nice, scenery all around here some mountains in the back i like coming here to take photos it's like any time of day it always looks good here anyways let's take a look at this grill because it looks sick look at that and we got our tinted fog lights those things are sick i'm just making sure no one's coming i've never seen anyone else on this road but damn dude she just looks so good. We, uh, I hear the rally cars down below. That's what I keep hearing. So, I taped all the lights in black tape versus the white tape that I originally used. And now you can't see anything back there. Um, so, I'll have a video, or I'll have a demonstration of what it looks like right after this. Uh, because it looks really cool, or I'm assuming it does, but I haven't driven this thing for a week, so it feels really good to drive it. Man, she's just looking so good. I'm, I'm in love with those fog lights and definitely the grill. So I'm gonna take some photos. I'll probably add them in right here, but here's a, here's the comparison of normal, or normal headlights versus this Grillcraft XE grill. Okay. They look really, uh, they don't look quite as yellow in the camera as they do in person, but they still look really yellow. All right. And then hoping it can kind of capture the spread of the lights on the normal headlights. And then if you can turn the brights on. Are those the brights? They don't even seem that bright. 
Yeah. And then the switch should be right next to the fuse panel. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's super bright. That it goes all the way up there. What do what? Yeah. That looks really good. Oh man, that looks so cool with all the lights on. <laughs> Oh, that just blinds me, oh my god. 